Welcome back friends. Those of you that follow my channel know that I like a good bargain. I like a bargain when it comes to backpacking equipment, knives, guns, bicycle parts, do-it-yourself RV stuff. Doesn't matter. I like a good bargain. I also like it when I'm hunting for vintage cast iron cookware. And we've got some real bargains here. I didn't pay any, any more than $8 for any of these. Uh, my favorite little find here is this little number three Griswold. Didn't know it was a Griswold because it was so caked up and nasty. And I gave $3 for this and it's going to be in mint condition when we're finished. There's a couple different methods you can use to recondition these things. And uh, some people like to use Easy Off. I think that stuff is so nasty. It's caustic. It's you know, it's just, it's not good to deal with. You can really, uh, you know, mess up your skin if you get it on you and stuff. And frankly, I haven't gotten, gotten that method to work very good. I, I sprayed some skillets down with Easy Off, put them in a plastic bag, let them sit 24 hours, and still had to do a bunch of work to them. I just don't like it. And the cleanup is just, it's just not worth it. My favorite method is what we're going to use today, and that is the self-cleaning oven method kind of two varieties of that. Use your oven in your house here for say the skillets we have here that are going to be just fine. But if you have one that for instance uh, has paint on it or something like that, or it looked like it might have been used in a, I don't know, a auto repair place and they had oil in it or something nasty like that, take it out to your gas grill, light up the gas grill, uh, get all the burners on high and get it up really hot, set them in there for a couple hours and let it work. I had a friend of mine give me uh, a real nice Wagner Ware number 10, uh, but he'd been hanging out on the fence for about 10 years and had paint on it. He was using it as a, as a target for his pellet rifle. And uh, so obviously you don't want to bring that in the house because those paint fumes are really nasty. And uh, so we used that on the outdoor grill and it worked muy buenos. So what we're gonna do here, all we need is our oven and just about any oven that anybody has is gonna have a self-cleaning mode to it. Self-cleaning is shorthand for hotter than hell. Because once you get this thing going in the self-cleaning method, it's gonna lock this door. You're not gonna be able to, to open it up until it shuts off and cools back down. Because it's so hot, if you open that thing, you're probably gonna lose some eyebrows and that awesome comb over you've been working on to look like Donald Trump and you don't want that to happen. So this is gonna be hot and it is gonna take some time. It's gonna be approximately four hours in the oven. So we're just gonna put these things in here and we're gonna walk away and then we'll go through the next step of getting these things reconditioned and restored back to a uh, really nice condition. So let's go ahead and put these in. All I do is put an oven liner down here and I'm gonna take these and we're gonna turn them upside down. I like to wait until I get a few pieces together rather than do just one. And since this does heat up the house quite a bit, and it does smell, I mean it doesn't smell bad, it smells like you're cooking something, you know, with, with some grease, like your fry daddy's been going for two days. But it does heat up the house and it also has a little odor to it and because of that reason I do this when the wife is out of town like she is this week so we're gonna go ahead and get this started the door is gonna lock and this is gonna take approximately four hours to go through the process and then it's gonna have to cool down so let's let it do its thing and we'll come back and check on it in a few hours well, it's been about four and a half hours now. The oven went through a four hour cycle here in the self cleaning. We could have went a little shorter probably, but I thought four would be just fine. And it's cooled down, so let's check the results. All right. Oh, you can see that all the old grease and everything that was caked up on these is just now just a powder. That's gonna wash off really, really nice. Remember the uh, little small Griswold we had and how thick and caked up that was on the back? Well, it's all gone now. It's just, it's just powder. Now, if your skillets were just gunked up and dirty 
greasy like these were with maybe just some slight rust, the self-cleaning oven method is going to work for you probably just fine. Uh, after a good washing and a scrubbing with some steel wool, I think it's going to be just what we need here. But if you have some, some uh, cast iron that is severely rusted and really nasty, you might have to use another method such as electrolysis or a vinegar and water bath, maybe even a lye bath. There's all sorts of methods on, uh, on the internet you can check out and see which works for you. But you really don't have to go through electrolysis or, or a lye bath for something that was, that was just greasy and nasty. You can put these out on the outdoor grill for two or three hours or here in the self-cleaning oven and it's probably going to work for you just perfect. So now what we're going to do is we're going to take these over to the sink. We're going to get them all washed up and then go on to the next step. We got our skillets over here by the sink. Go ahead and set you out some towels because you're going to need that. To get your little assembly line going. You're going to need some dishwashing soap, sponge. This is a Scotch Brite type sponge here. Uh, you can use either side, and also some steel wool. What we're going to do is wash the skillet in some warm water and dishwashing soap. This will be the only time that you're going to use dishwashing soap. On your skillet. Why is that? Well I'm glad you asked. When was the last time you saw a advertisement for dishwashing detergent that didn't mention it cuts grease? Well that's why because dishwashing detergent it works great especially on your hands when you're working outside and you got some greasy hands that's because it cuts grease. But once we get our skillets all cleaned up and re-seasoned you don't want to use dishwashing soap on that to cut your seasoning right back out of your pan. So what we're going to do is we're going to wash these off with just some warm water. Just depends on how much how much uh, it's going to need. Probably not going to need a whole lot. You can see this stuff just the majority of it just washes right off, and we're just going to get a little bit of dishwashing soap here. And take our steel wool. Now oh, that reminds me of that tone there. Go ahead and set your oven to 200 degrees because once we clean our our skillet here, look how how nice and clean that's coming. Once we do that. We are going to put it in the oven at 200 degrees after we dry it off by hand. And that will open up the pores in the cast iron and it will dry all of the, uh, the moisture out. That's looking pretty good. Remember this one? This was the one that was nice and thick and crusty. Still got a little rust there. Now you can work on these as much or as little as you want. If you have some stuff that's really bad, you might have to take it outside and get your drill motor and a wire wheel and get it the way you want it. But I think we're not going to have to do a whole lot more than this right here. And remember, this is the only time we're going to use any dishwashing liquid on this. Let me get a towel. And we're going to dry this thing off just as good as we can, and I'll show it to you. Oh man, this thing, I'm kind of grinning here. Three dollars, and I'm pretty happy with that. 
Okay. Then we're going to put this one over here in the oven and uh, let it go for, oh, 10 minutes or so. Uh, pour a glass of wine while we're waiting. How about that? Well, we've been uh, letting our skillets dry in the oven, 200 degrees, 10, 15 minutes. As you know, we've got five skillets in here. We're not gonna do them all for you, but let's get on to the fun part, and that's the seasoning. Now, seasoning is the black magic that makes your cast iron cooking work, and everybody has their own way of doing this, and there's no uh, single or perfect or correct way to do this, but I'll show you a method that's worked pretty good for me. So, cracked open a nice little Zinfandel out of the Lodi region. Mm, California. Yep. So we'll be ready to go. So I am going to, let's pick a skillet here. Uh, how about this little, that little Wagnerware. It's number six skillet. It's gonna turn out really nice. Uh, still a little warm and you want that warm when you do your seasoning. Now, there's all different types of oils that people will recommend out there. Um, you can do whatever you want. I've had bad experience with vegetable oils. Um, you can go check out the cast iron forums, uh, watch YouTube videos until your eyes bleed, and try to figure out what the best oil ever is. And when you're finished with all that and you're not able to focus any longer, just go get some Crisco. <laughs> That's all you need. It seems to be the most popular seasoning choice. I've never had any problem with it. And, uh, you know, it, it always works pretty good. I use a lint-free cloth. I use the same one every time. I just keep it in a baggie. Um, and while the... While the skillet is still warm, I'm going to get some Crisco here. Still a little too warm to grab a hold of. And you just want to coat it all and it's going to get in here all nice and neat. While it's warm, these pores are going to be open. And it's just going to suck, suck this, uh, this Crisco right up. All over both sides. Don't be shy, stuff's cheap. Make sure you get it down in these letters here as well. Get all down in there. And these ribs or ridges along the edge, make sure you get it in there. Make sure you get the handle. All in there nice and good. Oh yeah. That heat just sucks it up. 200 degrees is about perfect. See, look, that's... Looks almost dry already, doesn't it? Give it a little more. Let her soak it up. Okay, then you want to wipe this off. You say, well, hell, I just put it on there. What do you want to wipe it off for? Well, because excess oil is going to do a couple things. When you put it back in the oven, you're going to see some ridges here, like little wavy lines. The oil is actually pooling there. That means you have too much oil on there. So we want to wipe it off really good. And then when you think you have it wiped down pretty good, wipe it again. Yeah, buddy. I usually go through when I'm bringing a, a skillet you know, back down to zero is what I call it, and starting over, stripping it. I'll probably season it at least twice, depending on how I like it, maybe three times. Look at that. Man, that thing looks like it's ready to, 
to cook right now. So now what we're going to do is we are going to change our temperature to 300 degrees and we're going to put it upside down in there and we're going to set the timer for about oh 15 minutes that'll give me a chance to drink a little more wine and we're going to come back and check on it here in just a bit don't go away okay we've had about 15 minutes our little skillet here let's see what it looks like yeah it's gonna be hot make sure you get oven mitt that thing's looking pretty good look how nice and dark it's getting uh, here's what I want to check is the surface really don't see any pooling or anything and once you start getting to this stage and uh, actually putting on your seasoning make sure that you're using a lint free towel okay that's why I use that same one over and over again now what I'm doing here is I just want to make sure that there weren't any wavy lines or any of the uh, seasoning pooling uh, down here in the surface. It just kind of looks bad and you have to end up taking the, the skillet all the way back down again. So what we're going to do now is we're going to put it back in the oven and we're going to change our temperature up to you know, 350 to 400 whatever you feel good about it's really not that big a deal it's gonna be hot so that's all that matters so we're gonna go uh, let's split the difference 375 and it's gonna be in there for two hours now and that'll be the final bake on seasoning there then you can take it out and look at it I always let those things cool completely and then I'm gonna go through another uh, seasoning again I always do it at least twice sometimes I'll do three times but uh, let's wait a couple hours and see how that looks and I think we're gonna have pretty good result okay we've been through that seasoning process everything's cooled back down I want to tell you right away though I decided to pull these two number eight pans out here this VSR and this Wagner wear uh, mainly because I plan on keeping them. I don't have a number 8 BSR and this thing is in excellent condition. Uh, the surface of this thing is just uh, smoother than a baby's butt and uh, I want to keep it and so it had some surface rust that I wanted to see if I could get off with the wire wheel. Same thing with this Wagner wear here, this older one and I think these are going to be two great pans to keep so I want to give them some extra attention They've been through one seasoning where these have been through two. You can see the reddish tint on this one. This BSR looked exactly like that before we seasoned it. So I think once we, uh, once we get through our second seasoning process, this one's going to look just like that one. These other two number sixes, they have turned out really nice just after our second seasoning. And so you can see now the before and after effects of our little thrift store finds here. I'm very, very proud of my little grizz wall here. I think it was two or three bucks, a little number three. It doesn't even look like it's been used at all, but it's ready to go sit in the collection now and we can uh, hopefully add some more to that. So I hope you guys got something from this. This is how you can take some nasty old crusty thrift store finds. I don't think there was anything here that was more than about eight dollars and you can take them down to bare metal right here in your own kitchen or out on your own grill and then you can bring them back to life into something you can use. Speaking of using I think we're gonna... how about this one? I think I'm gonna cook up a pork chop. So till next time you guys be safe and bon appetit. Adiós.